the biggest story right now is everybody's kind of on pins and needles. Everybody's in suspense about what the Biden administration will choose to do with regard to responding to the death of the three soldiers um, over the weekend in, um, in, uh, in, in their base in Jordan, uh, attacked by a drone attack by Iranian-connected uh, um, uh, militias. Uh, the, uh, Trump, the Biden administration has said that they will hold Iran responsible, but they've also said, and they've been very clear, and, and they've gone out of their way to say that they do not want to expand the conflict, they don't want to turn this into a war, they don't want to go to war with Iran, please, no war. You know, basically, uh, he, he, Blinken uh, has repeated over and over again that, quote, escalation is in no one's interests, and, quote, no one wants to see more fronts opened in this conflict. Well, I want to call BS on the Biden administration. Escalation is in the United States' interest. Opening up another front in this conflict is necessary because that front is already open. Iran is clearly the aggressor across multiple fronts. It was the funder, motivator, inspirer, and giver of, I think, permission for Hezbollah, for Hamas to do what they did on October 7th. It is responsible for what is going on in Gaza right now. And to some extent, you could argue that the blood of uh, Israeli soldiers, but also the blood of Palestinian civilians is on Iran, the Iranian regime. Iran is responsible for the Houthis attacking civilian ships, carrying civilian cargo through the Red Sea and blocking the sea lanes and obstructing, obstructing trade the Houthis are Iran's responsibility. Put aside the horror and the damage and the destruction that the Houthis have inflicted on Yemen, their own country itself. Iran's responsibility. That's a front. That's an Iranian front. What are we doing about it? Israel's doing something about Hamas, but not much about the Houthis. Hezbollah would not be attacking Israel almost on a daily basis without approval from Iran. Iran is already open another front with Israel on the northern border. And Israel so far is doing a tit for tat, tit for tat, tit for tat, tit for tat, which is what Blinken is basically suggesting the United States do. And Iran has launched a systematic attacks on US bases in Iraq, Syria, and Jordan. And whether again you think the United States should be in Iraq, Syria, or Jordan or not, Iran has no uh, uh, sovereignty there. Iran is not responsible for kicking the, Israeli, the, uh, the Americans out. I Iran should not be the one uh, launching attacks. Iran is at a state of war with the United States. So you don't want to escalate. Iran is escalating all the time. The only reason only three Americans have been killed so far is because the anti-air defenses of the America is pretty good. And because, uh, because of our intelligence, primarily satellite intelligence, we get notified in advance when they're going to attack and, and, and people hide in bunkers. But Iranian intent is to kill lots of Americans, not just three. And Iran is only going to escalate more the weaker we appear. Iran will only do more if the United States does not respond, does not do anything. Now, Biden will respond. But it'll be the same response as we've gotten for the last 40 years. A, a, a few missiles into some deserted warehouses or, or taking out a few particular uh, weapons sites or something like that. God forbid, make sure you don't kill anybody. Maybe they'll kill a, a, an Iranian uh, Republican guard here or there. It's going to be weak. Blinken is basically saying it's weak. We don't want, please, Iranians, whatever we do right now, realize we do not want to escalate. Please remember, we don't want to open another front in this war. He is signaling. So just don't take anything 
we do right now is it's too seriously, please. You know, right? We have to respond because it's like the tit for tat, tit for tat thing in American public. They kind of pissed off the three American soldiers died. So we have to do something. But don't take it too seriously, Iranians. Please, Iranians, we, 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 we beg. Really pathetic. Pathetic. Yeah, one of Freeman says, watch the recent Nikki Haley interviews on the subject. Nikki Haley is by far, by far the best politician I've heard on these issues. Again, she has her problems, but and, and, and the main one was the stupid anonymity privacy issue on the internet. But in terms of dealing with Iran, she is by far the best politician on this issue. She should be the Republican nominee. She should be the next president of the United States. And maybe because of all those shoulds, she will not. I mean, American people are, are, are not, not in a mood to actually elect somebody with leadership skills, are not in the mood to actually elect somebody who would actually confront our enemies and actually deal with them. They're in the mood of hunkering down and sticking their head very, very, very deep into a pile of shit, well, into a pile of sand, but in this case, given who they're going to elect, it's a pile of shit. Um, America needs to escalate. The Iranian threat needs to be dealt with. It needs to be dealt with in a way that's unequivocal. It needs to be dealt with in the way that the, the, the message the United States is sending cannot be questioned. It needs to be dealt with so that the Iranians will never attack an American again. That's how it needs to be dealt with. It won't be dealt with that like that, it, which means uh, the entire leadership infrastructure of Iran needs to be taken out. Every single uh, location in which uh, the United States believes that there's nuclear uh, development, nuclear weapon development should be destroyed. Every single factory that is building a drone should be taken out. And here I include factories and nuclear facilities that are in populated areas. The Iranian National uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, God, uh, a Republican God, needs to be destroyed. It's leadership taken out. And that would be, that would be enough, right? And, and no troops on the ground. Don't need troops on the ground. There's an excellent article today by Elliot Cohen uh, in, in the Atlantic uh, magazine. Um, and uh, it basically states a truth, a, a, a absolute truth. Um, and that is that Iran cannot be conciliated. That is the title of the article. America's segmented, limited, and naive policy towards Iran continues to fail. The U.S. needs to try something new, and to try something new is to destroy this regime. Um, since 2003, as he points out, the Iranians have worked diligently to attack American forces in Iraq. They, 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 their weapons have killed Americans. Their, their proxies have killed Americans. The, the Revolutionary Guard, it's not, uh, I keep calling them the Iraqi Republican Guard, it's Revolutionary Guard, the Iranian Revolutionary Guard uh, coordinates all these efforts to attack Americans, to kill Americans, to destroy American facilities, and to, uh, to thwart American efforts in the Middle East. And that needs to be ended, and the only way to end that is not through negotiation, it is uh, through military action. Let me just say, the Biden administration, as we speak, through back channels, continues to try to negotiate a deal with the Iranians. As we'll bomb Iran, they will continue to negotiate. And most of the Iranian team at the, in the Biden administration, a former Obama team that negotiated the first horrible deal, and uh, they are trying to negotiate another deal now. If you listen to, uh, uh, to Bolton, uh, uh, to Bolton, to uh, Bolton, uh, and, uh, and, and Bolton is saying, Bolton is being asked, what would Trump do about Iran? And Bolton's, Bolton's argument, again, Bolton had a deep experience with Trump on all these issues. Bolton is saying Trump would try to negotiate a deal. He would try to show that he can cut a better deal. Trump would not destroy the Iranian regime. He would not respond any more aggressively 
then probably Biden is going to, he would just try to cut a deal, just a different deal, his kind of deal. He's the deal maker, remember? He's the guy who ran to North Korea to meet with his leader rather than uh, confront him. He's the guy who wants to, who trusts Putin more than he trusts American um, intelligence agencies. He's the guy who is jealous of Xi's, the fact that everybody stands up when Xi walks in the room, isn't that cool? All right, uh, by the way, nothing of this has anything to do with Israel. Zero, zilch. And everything to do with American self-interest. This crisis started in 1979 when Ayatollah Khomeini took over Iran. That had nothing to do with Israel. The hostages in the American embassy had nothing to do with Israel. I mean, it is, it is a typical deflection of uh, and, and, and disgustingly anti-Israeli and anti-Semitic to constantly blame Israel for America's failures in foreign policy. The troops in Jordan have nothing to do with Israel. The invasion of Iraq, as wrong as it was and as stupid as it was, had nothing to do with Israel. 9-11 was not Israel's fault. But you can continue to pretend, some of you out there, you can continue to live in a fantasy world that blames Israel for American weakness, that blames Israel for the lack of American strategic thinking when it comes to the threat that it faces in the Middle East. And for those of you who are really interested, Sam Harris has an excellent, excellent podcast that he just put up, I think, a day ago on uh, the myths around uh, what's going on in Israel right now that relates what's going on right now in Israel to the global jihadist uh, movement and the global jihadist war against the West. It is excellent. Um, uh, Sam Harris on these issues is fantastic. And uh, everybody should listen to it, share it, distribute it widely as you can. Um, all right, we will see. I mean, uh, the Middle East is a mess. And Biden is definitely the wrong president to be in the midst of this. He is just too weak. And, and politically, he's torn in too many directions, right? He, he's got to try to appease the Jews. He's got to try to appease the left. He, you know, they're in Michigan, uh, if he wants to win Michigan, he, he wants to get the Arab vote in Michigan, the Muslim vote in Michigan, which is, which is non-trivial in the state of Michigan. Uh, he, he, he has to appease his, his crazy left. He has to appease, and, and, he, and at, on top of that, the guy can't think, right? And he's got a team of uh, appeasers when it comes to foreign policy.